So good morning, everyone. Um, so since Professor Sibir um, talked about the future and vision, so I want to mention uh, some, the current situation of the Japanese healthcare system. So uh, this is this is pronounced koki. So uh, in Japan, with strong influence from China, um, we have some the, we have some ages to celebrate. Uh, with special names. And Koki means, Koki is uh, for the 17 years old people. And uh, the left side means old, and right side is rare. So this means in the, in the, pre, in the recent, <coughs> until recently, um, Japanese in Japan, the 17 years old is very rare. But as you may already know, so it, the aging is <coughs> Yeah, rapid, uh, in Japan is a super aging society already. So uh, the average life expectancy is 84, and uh, more uh, surprisingly, the, mo the mode of life expectancy for female is 93, so it's already over 90. But this is the current situation, but our social security system has established in 1960s, and which in that days, uh, the life expectancy rate is, rate is just uh, 60 years old or, or 17 years old. So uh, with a long-term perspective, uh, this purple area is the, the period what we established the social security, security system. And in the long run, so demographic structure is changing from 19th century model to 21st century model. What, which means the, elder, the, the current social security system is based on the idea that the, the elder people, the population of elder people is less than the population of younger people. So that, that causes some problems, but also there's a, a fortunate uh, thing. So, right, so under the current, uh, the recent research, um, the 17 year, uh, the, the physical ability of the 17 years old people are the same as the 65 years old people in 15 years ago. Does it make sense? Okay. So with, what I want to say is uh, people are getting younger in the physical ability in, by five years in this 15 years. And not only the physically, but also mentally, the, the elder people become energetic in Japan. So even the healthcare, uh, no, uh, social security benefits starts from the, the 65 years old, but still the elder people want to work, not only for the economical reason, but also the, the purpose of living. So the 80% of elder people want to keep their work style. So what, what the inside of these things, these facts, is we need to change our uh, you know, simple three-stage models, so education and uh, the, the work and the retirement, to change this kind of the gradation model. And we, can, uh, we can stop working at 65, but still, if we want to work until um, 75 or 80, we need to uh, adjust the social system to accept that kind of uh, motivation. And if the healthy longevity is realized, so this is um, rough estimation, but um, we don't want to say the, the elder people are burden here, but um, if so we can redefine, redefine the elder, elder or old uh, elder, elderly, from 65 to 75, we can re, um, rebalance the social security system and take back to 15 years ago. So, uh, and this is the structure, and so this is a, the macro, pass, mac, macro demographic change. And, uh, and so from here, I want to talk about the, the structure of diseases. So as you may know, the, in these 15 years, uh, in, so 15 years ago, the most of Japanese people died with tuberculosis. 
But right now, people die. People died with the cancer, and uh, so and and diabetes. Uh, we have three million uh, patients, and uh, that um, sorry, um, dementia. Dementia. We have uh, five million people. Uh, five million. Yeah, five million people are suffer from dementia. So uh, obviously, the the disease type is changed from the infection to lifestyle related diseases. <coughs> so with this change, we should re re remodel the healthcare and medical system, and also the medical uh, approach toward the patient. And uh, the key concept is already the other panelists mentioned that, but the prevention and the behavior change. And from here, we are, we, we are talk, I am talking about some specific uh, policy about <coughs> the behavior change evidence collection and uh, digital, uh, digital health. So this is not uh, the technical need. So we collect the data of the people's the step of weight and the wearable. And we have a clinical data from the medical professions, professionals. And we combine this data on the application. And the medical professional uh, evaluate the situation of patients and make some instructions. And we trace back every instruction and, the, and the actual data. And we compile this data in a research database to create the AI to support the, the medical professional's decision making. And the same approach has held to the dementia. Now actually, the Finland already uh, successfully uh, uh, done for the, uh, the behavior change effect to show the effectiveness of the behavior change with multi-factor intervention for the dementia. And we are doing the same scheme uh, for the dementia prevention and doing the, the similar experiment to, to the more than 1,000 uh, people in these three years. And one thing, one, another thing is that we are now creating the data lake. So data lake is it's not an organized uh, database, but uh, we collect the data from six different uh, academic societies of the clinical image data to the infrastructure <laughs> and, uh, and to analyze the, the some insight. And this is another policy and kind of unique policy for in Japan. Um, since you know the Japan has a long-term uh, employment system, so the employee health is good for the management and the productivity of the company. So with that concept, uh, we uh, uh, we started five years ago uh, to promote the company who is um, who is uh, ex who, who are doing much effort to enhance the employee's health to uh, make the company uh, more productive. And together with the uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange, uh, we make some award to, you know, to appreciate these companies. And actually, 25% the of listed companies in Japan already started to make some effort to health and productivity and management. And finally, and the last, and the most importantly, most importantly, the innovation is the important. Innovation is the key to the healthcare and the life science. And uh, unfortunately, in Japan, uh, until uh, still, the ecosystem of the technology and the te technology transfer and the finance is not so matured. So we created the healthcare innovation hub. Uh, to support the startups and the tech, uh, deep tech companies and the investors, and also the academia. And healthcare is promising uh, market, healthcare and uh, uh, life science. The many uh, other, industri uh, other industry wants to uh, uh, go into this market as well. So we are now uh, connecting these uh, 
uh, needs and seeds uh, in this platform. And yeah, the Japanese, uh, lots of Japanese giant companies are joining. And also this, um, this is uh, totally open to the foreign companies and the foreign investors. So if you are uh, interested, in, interested in this innovation hub, please contact me. And with these initiatives, uh, here are some uh, examples of the tech-driven uh, products which we are promoting them right now. So uh, this is urination uh, prediction uh, <coughs> device, wearable device, which is attached to the, the patient's belly and to check the, the bladder size to predict and the urination timing. And this is very important for caregivers uh, in Japan, so this is yeah, unique and, and uh, socially important product. And uh, this is apparel, the wearable, so, but uh, this is totally the same as this, the apparel, uh, other shirts on, or t-shirts or parka. Um, but the, the micro sensor tips are uh, attached to the, every part of this apparel. So we can monitor the body moving image with a 3D image and precisely to check the, the effectiveness of rehabilitation or movement. And the other case is Shimazu. Shimazu is a giant company for the medical inspection equipment. But recently they developed the, some, uh, the technology to detect the accumulation of uh, amyloid beta protein, which is a major cause of the Alzheimer uh, dementia, with a very limited uh, amount of blood. And uh, this is the final case, and uh, this is a brain tech company, uh, but kind of the, the consumer type. So we can adapt, so this is weird, but uh, we can, you can you can put the, this device into the, your brain, and uh, you can see. You can do the, some training, or cognitive training, or something, and see where you, your brain is activate, activated, and which is uh, effective to the, the dementia, dementia prevention uh, uh, training, also. And from here, the, the, the international, uh, the global, uh, so we, are, we all also have a global conference. The one is the uh, Wear Raising Society Summit. Uh, some of the panelists uh, here uh, joined the last month. And we will have uh, another one in the next October. And more specific area for the dementia, because the five million people are suffering from dementia in Japan. So we will have an uh, international global roundtable in uh, next March so to, to uh, share the, the knowledge and the experience in that, in that area. Okay, so uh, again, so we, I am coming from the Ministry of Economy, not Ministry of Health. So why we are focusing on the healthy longevity from the economic policy perspective? So uh, there are three things to mention now. One is the social security system is very, uh, not so again with this slide. So uh, the one is the social security system is, is strongly uh, related to the companies or economies competitiveness. So the social security system should be remodeled, remodeled to, to adjust to this the, the demographic change. And secondly, the healthcare industry is simply the huge market. So the 30 billion US dollar market in Japan is now uh, growing in, in, the, uh, with, uh, in the healthcare and the life science area. And uh, lastly, uh, the productivity of the economy. Because uh, if the people are getting older, but still uh, the healthy, healthy condition, they can work. As, as I mentioned, uh, their motivation, they are motivated to work until uh, they lost the health. They lost until the, until the time they lost the health. So all the productivity of the economy uh, is enhanced if the healthy longevity is uh, realized. So this is a current standpoint. 
So even so, that's Professor Shibuya already mentioned, but the population of Japan already picked out in the 2013. But uh, still, the working population and the female uh, social inclusion, inclusion and the elderly people uh, working population is still growing. So this is incremental change, but we are trying to uh, adjust the social security system in the future. And this right, so just uh, one thing. So in this, so th in the next 40 years at least. So Japan is, this is not a growing growth rate, economic growth rate, this is an aging rate, unfortunately. But uh, um, the, at least 40 years, uh, we are uh, the number one aging society. So um, this can be a mirror of your uh, future. So please keep an eye on how we are doing. So thank you for listening.